going to answer some of the fun questions you guys have been sending us over the last few weeks. And Kate's going to join in, which always makes it more fun. So, how do we deal with burnout and frustration and stress and all that kind of stuff? Basically, we just act like idiots. And that's what we're doing today. So, because it's Kate and I, and we're trying to get stuff done, and believe it or not, it's like hours till this video is due to go live, so I need to film it and edit it, and ah! So, bear with us. Oh, 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 hot. Yes, you are, my dear. <laughs> well, thank you. I meant the tomato, however. So, um, if you saw our Instagram <laughs> posts and Facebook posts recently, we're doing the allotment ABC, and I posted why is for yum, and I told you guys to go to our blog and get lots of cool recipes. Kate is currently making the red, the tomato and red pepper soup. That's what she's doing now. Right, I thought we've got a few questions that are about us rather uh -huh. than the garden, so I thought I might get you while you're in here doing that. Captive audience, you mean? Yeah, so I can't run away. No, not basically, because <laughs> I know what you like. You promise you'll film and then you run away and hide. Or do important things of an important nature. She hides. Just, just want to put that out there. Also, anyone that's freaking out about the flickering on the camera, apologies, but we've got LED lights under the counters and they're a different frequency to the camera, hence the flickering. Okay. How did we meet? But we also got a few of these. So how did we meet? Where did we meet? Did we have a mutual love of gardening at the offset and how long have we been together? That's a lot of questions. Um... Who wants to answer which question? Uh, How long I, have we been together, dear? Because you know I'm rubbish for the whole mass thing. It will be 14 years at the end of this year. 14 years? And we've been married for seven years this year. Dear Lord. I thought it was six. No, it was six last year. See what I mean? This is why Kate does a mass thing. But it's about 19 in lockdown years. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> Oh, God, who you, that, that's crazy. It doesn't feel that long. So, uh, where did we meet? Well, it depends what you mean by meet. Do you mean physically meet? The first place we physically met was Waverley Station. Very romantic, very yes. brief encounter. Very... Well, you know, if it was filmed noir, it could have been super romantic. We actually met online and then we arranged to meet up at Waverley Station in Edinburgh and went out for beers and food and stuff. Um, okay. Did we have a mutual love of gardening at the offset? No, because we didn't have a garden. Either of us. No, we did not. You'd never had a garden. No. Uh, whereas I grew up with, in a house with a garden and used to help um, Dad with cutting the grass and doing the edges and weeding and stuff, but I'd never had a garden of, your own. of my own. No. I'm the same. We grew up, when we were really small, we had a patch of grass outside that we played on as kids, but my parents didn't garden. My granddad was a keen gardener um, and quite into his roses and stuff, but it was never something we did as a family or we, I was never taught how to garden or anything like that. So we didn't have a, a mutual love of it at the beginning. Yeah, so all of that, basically, no, we didn't have a mutual love of gardening at the start because we didn't have a garden. However, that leads on to what inspired us to garden. Well, basically, we decided we both lived in flats or you might say apartments in the city centre and we got sick of not having any outdoor space and having to go to the park every time it's nice weather. And then you go all the way to the park and then you need a pee, so you have to come all the way home again and you don't have access to kind of like the fridge and drinks and you have to take it all with you. And we kind of got sick of it. Um, and we're quite antisocial, so we also got sick of the other people we had to share the park with, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, so we decided to buy a house. You make us sound delightful. <laughs> See, people think we're lovely, and we're really not. We decided to buy a house, and thought if we're buying a house, we'll get our own outdoor space and things. And I think that, I don't know why the whole... Because it really, we started off, it was just about having our own outdoor space, that was all. And then it was, OK, if we've got an outdoor space, we want to make it nice. And it escalated from there, really. Yeah, because as well as people who have seen sort of before and after type pictures online, and if you haven't, I'm sure you like and post some. Um, this house didn't have a garden per se when we bought it. It had been bricked over or um, 
gravelled over, so it was pretty much a blank slate. So that did give us carte blanche, if you like, to go, OK, what, what are we going to do? do? What, will we, what will we put in it? And it kind of grew arms and legs from there. The thing is, I don't remember when I decided I was going to grow veggies. I know you had a whole thing about you were going to have hanging baskets. Yes, and a lawn. Cause and a lawn. I, I, do you want to explain this? Well, to me, that whole having your own house and garden, you have a lawn. And if you have a lawn, you want it to look nice. And you do that suburban thing of going, cutting up, you know, cutting stripes in it and tending the lawn. And th that was just what I pictured a garden as being. And yeah, I yeah, like my so lawn to like look nice. Yes, yeah, so for everyone that keeps telling us to get rid of the lawns and grow veggies, no. and them, Kate likes her lawns. It's part of. Ours is a garden, not an allotment, so it's both. Yeah, I don't remember why I decided to grow vegetables, given we'd never done anything like this in the past. No, I mean, before we before we bought the house... We were getting excited. Yeah, and you, you took a, a fancy to growing to growing tomatoes. Yeah, I think that... I don't know why. And I don't know why. I, I, I can't either. remember what made you think... Oh, I live in a small flat in Glasgow with a balcony. I'll grow tomatoes, you I, thought. Oh, yeah, I should explain. <laughs> Before we got the house, I tried to grow tomatoes and peppers and things on my tiny balcony, um, which was about a metre and a half wide by two metres long, if we were lucky. And north-facing. And north-facing, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. So um, it wasn't very successful, and I had a flimsy-wimsy greenhouse in it. Um, but, yeah... I don't, I really, I have no idea, I don't remember, I'm old and I'm losing my memory. But but we'd, we'd literally, the night we moved in here, I ordered the first greenhouse online that night. <laughs> Mad bugger. <laughs> Sorry, I'm okay. going to move out of shot. Uh, do, 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 do. Compost! Doesn't go in the bed, it goes in the compost. There you go, fed the compost. Right. Fed the beast. That's that's all the just us kind of things. So I'm going to go and get some work done in the garden. I may come and annoy you with questions later. All right, those dishes need washed, so you're going off to the garden. Yeah, are you? basically, right. that's okay. how it works. Uh -huh. Right, that's that's fine. You do know what they don't believe this nonsense you keep pulling about how hard done by you. Are. I will just be the kitchen drudge. It's fine. No, no, honestly, go to the garden. It's fine. I'm, I'm yeah, no, we should do all this <laughs> off camera so no one can see you. <laughs> okay, to the garden. So first job I'm going to get done today then is I need to put another tier onto my quad grow because as you can see, the tomatoes are actually starting to grow out of it. They grow fast. Yes? I thought I'd ask you some more questions since you're in the greenhouse. I'm busy, you know, I've got stuff to do. Really? Yeah. Okay. Since you're in there planting edible things, someone has asked, what is your favourite plant to eat? And if you were a plant, what would it be? Is pizza a plant? Uh, no. <laughs> Can you put plants on pizza? Yes, we do. <laughs> we grow things that we put on pizza. Uh, Favourite plant to eat? I'm trying to think of something that sounds really cool, but I don't know. Tomatoes? <laughs> Is that allowed? Tomatoes? You can put those on pizza. Yeah. OK. And in the soup I just made. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um. Okay, tomatoes, I like the really acidic tomatoes, you know, the ones that kind of make you go poo when you get them, which is why we grow a lot of the little cherries that we do, because that's their flavour. What about you? What's your favourite plant to eat? Hamburger's not a plant. But you can put tomatoes on it. Um, my favourite plant to eat? I like when we have strawberries, as long as we don't have too many strawberries. I do like a strawberry. Um... I like when we do our own salad-y things and fresh herbs because you can just go out and grab them and just have them there and then and they're just like... What's your favourite herb then? Tarragon. Tar French tarragon. French tarragon. <laughs> we like our French tarragon. And fresh basil. Mm. Fresh basil's good. Again, you can put that on a pizza. You can. <laughs> Detective. Pe people are thinking there's going to be a bit of a theme here with you and pizza. We, we may do pizza at the end of this video, you never know. What plant would I like to be then? Is it plant or flower or? Uh, I think it said plant. 
Yes, oh. if you were a plant. So you could be a flower or a okay. vegetable. So it's or not a... necessarily what I'd like to be, but if I was a plant... If you were a plant, what plant would you be? What plant represents be. you? I would be a sunflower, wouldn't I? I love the... sunflowers and they love the sun and I like the sun, basically. Except they're tall and you're not really... I'd be a dwarf sunflower. Okay. <laughs> Divorce. How many years have we been together again? Fourteen. Love you. Love you too, darling. What plant are you then? If I was a plant, what would I be? Um, what would I be? Probably something that likes to lurk in the dark and the shade and not be visible. To mould. <laughs> no! A mushroom. Well, I keep you in a... Never mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very old joke. Um, yeah, I'd probably be a kind of something. A hellebore. A hellebore, because they are my favourite plants. Do you want to go and show them your hellebore that you're rather proud of? I can do. On you go, feel free. Is it, uh, they have to carry things. And you have to work the camera. And I have to work the camera, oh dear lord. This could go horribly wrong. Apologies if this goes horribly wrong. Bye. I have Bye. Drop the oh, the tripod's too tall. You're only doing this for comedy if. Mm. I can do tilted. Oh, look, I can do tilt. Tilt, there's my hellebore, isn't it lovely? The thing with hellebores, though, is that all the flowers point down the way, obviously, which is not ideal. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip you upside down and put you under a plant. Whoa! Bear with me. Yeah, we go down and round and underneath. Look, isn't that pretty? I hope that worked. And there's Eli filming me. Look. Oh, we could go into a whole infinity thing of you I'll, filming, me I'll filming, you filming, I'm me. I'm so impressed with the effort you make. <laughs> <laughs> I'm after Francis Ford Coppola's job. I think they're safe. <laughs> Okay, honey, next question. What do you regret growing? And what can you do without in your garden? Oh, um, actually, this is quite a good way to explain it. What do we regret growing? Right, it's kind of a difficult thing to say regret. We did try the kind of staple thing of broccoli and Brussels sprouts and that kind of thing. Because when you're a new gardener and you do that thing where you think everyone grows this, I have to grow it. But then again, we actually eat a lot of broccoli and Brussels sprouts and this is fine. However, it takes up a shed load of space. So we had an entire bed of sprouting broccoli and we only really got like one or two meals out of it. One. One meal. Okay, one meal. It was a good meal though. It we, was. We dipped it in camembert but it was, was fab. But it was only and, one meal. But we took up a whole bed for most of the year for that and, and the Brussels sprouts, we didn't get anything because caterpillars got to them and ate them all. It was really gutting. Um, but that's the thing I was saying about this. This is the broccoletti that you guys have seen me go on about lots. And I grew this. It was Steve at Greenside Up that recommended this stuff, and I love it. It grows really quickly. It doesn't take up loads of space at all. It's awesome on pizza. Um, yeah, it's really cool. I'm looking forward to giving it another try next year, because obviously I've tried it once, and I've learned a lot in the process, so I think I'm going to get loads of really good stuff. And it has survived and produced right through winter. Um, so yeah, so I'd happily do without proper sprouting broccoli as much as I'd love to have it, but realistically about space um, and replace it with this stuff. Yeah. What about you? Um, yeah, I would agree on the broccoli. I was disappointed that that, that didn't really work. Um, do I regret growing? Yeah, that's probably, probably the only one I would regret. The one thing I would like to, to do more, and I think we would both probably like to have a bit more, would be things like fruit, like soft fruits, but yeah. like raspberries or... Got the we've got blackberries. Um, I suppose in terms of regret, we did try growing blueberries and red currants and black currants, which did okay, but then we discovered that although we like looking at them, we don't really like eating them. <laughs> They were <laughs> lovely, they like little jewels, but they taste really Which was quite... was clearly a learning experience. But yeah, yeah some, some more fruit, but it's it's 
it's a space thing in terms of... So we'd almost need like six patio fruit trees or something? If only we knew somebody who... Who could recommend the supplier? Yeah. Where would you put them though? Well, that's the thing. Because the patio doesn't get a lot of sun. No, it doesn't. So there. that's that's <laughs> what I kind of regret is that we don't really have somewhere that we could grow something like that. It's the sunniest spot that's consistently yeah. sunny is out the front, but there isn't really anywhere to put something like that in at the front of the house. And there's rules about what we're allowed to grow out front. So, so. yeah, I kind yeah. of it's a shame that we can't do that, but. Something Otherwise. to think about for the future, though. If we've got any garden designers out there and you want to help us with how could we fit some small patio fruit tree things in without killing our garden, maybe it's an idea. Hmm. So, what other jobs have you got on today, then? Me? Um, I'm going to do some tidying and weeding, because I'm always tidying and weeding. Well, and that's a thing, actually. People ask this a lot, but what jobs we do and do we both garden? So... What is the split then? There's two of us, luckily, which I think makes a big difference in making things manageable, but what would you say the split is? Who does what jobs? Um, I do the lawns. And if you lie, I'm going to tell them you're lying, by the way. I do the lawns because I like cutting the grass. It's one of those bizarrely therapeutic things for me, is that whole cutting the, you know, cutting the grass, getting the edges looking good. I like doing that, so that's definitely one for me. We kind of split things like weeding, weeding and tidying. No, to be fair, I think you do the majority of the weeding and tidying. Well, but then I have got my burning fire, so I, I do like you to do, do the, the weed burning because we've got quite a lot of paving. Then I've got a weed burner for, for dealing with that because my knees can't take being four hours crawling about on the, on the paving at the front doing that, so... It's a shame yeah. it's windy today or you could have shown them your burning fire. Yeah, so it doesn't work so well. When you we... cackle with your burning fire, it's awesome. <laughs> but maybe get her to do an, an update video on her burning fire for you. So, yeah. The lawns, weeding. Um, clipping the hedges and things. Because although I've got an electric clipper for that, you need the... Ha Sorry to pick on you for your height again, sweetheart. But... <laughs> See what I put up with? You all think she's really nice. I am. But we have we have a cotoniasta hedge along the side of the house, and it's probably about this height now. So taking taking the electric clippers to that, you do actually need to be that little bit taller because you don't want to be on on ladders with power tools. So that sort of thing. Um, but growing veg the vegetables and the bringing things on and nurturing things in the greenhouse is more you. I'm a kind of a Say I'm an instant gratification kind of gardener. I'm I like nothing. <laughs> I like to think. Did See, you th now that we've officially said that yes, we are married, we can make comments like that. Yeah, I I like to do things where I can see that I've achieved something by the end of the day. I don't have the patience to go. I'm going to plant this seed, and I have to sit and wait for it to do something. I like to do the things that I can see what I've done by the end of the day that I've done something. So cutting the lawns or clipping the hedges or doing practical things like that that's makes you happy makes me happy and Which... i can i can lose myself in a task like that but that's the thing though because it makes you happy so that's what you do the whole point of gardening is it's a hobby it's fun it's how you relax makes you feel good so you do it the way you want to do it don't let people tell you you're doing it wrong or you should do it a certain way or and also don't let it get to you because you feel like you're not doing stuff and you're behind. Just, it's all right. The world's not going to end. The, the, we will address that question at the end of the video, though. <laughs> <sighs> That's peeling really badly, which is not good. That's actually a good point. Um, somebody asked, what are our pet peeves in the garden or is there a job that we hate doing every year? Painting the fence. I hate painting the fences. We paint it. the fences mo pretty much every year. Um, yeah. I, I, I cheat slightly. I cheat slightly. I, I paint the bits that have peeled the worst or you get that kind of green... Yeah, algae, algae type thing. thing on the bits. So I tend to focus on the bits that have done that rather than do the entire fence every year because... It takes hours. There's a lot of fencing because it's... Six well, foot high all the way round. So just a fence, and it's the individual boards. The boards, and then there's the shed, and then the raised beds, and the borders, and yeah, there's 
a lot of things to paint and I tried one of those spray painters one year it didn't work it used gallons of paint more paint than you would use doing the brush and actually I wasn't particularly happy with the no, results. No I so, wasn't either. Yeah it looks great when it's done but I dread doing it every year. That actually leads on nicely. So another random question that came in then. Um, why did you choose the colour for all the fences and things? Did you have a choice? Um, was it the only choice? Did you have a reason for it? But they do like to point out that they actually do like the nice warm red. So I'll pass this to you because you chose it and stuff. So In, in my defence, defence, <laughs> no. <laughs> in my defence, when we moved in, the fences, the fences were really badly peeling um, and there were less fences than there are now. So the fence at the greenhouse side of the garden was only four foot tall and it hadn't been painted at all ever. It was kind of grey, it was just the wood yeah, had it been just left. And bleached it was... out wood. The fence at the other side just really needed painted and the back fence at that time was a very open slat and what we decided was because there's a path and a park immediately the other side of it, we felt really exposed when we were in the garden because people tended to look through the fence as they were going past. So we put reed screening in, which was really quick and a really cheap way just to screen that off. So in terms of the fences that we had, there weren't actually that many. So we picked a colour we liked, quite like the red, it's quite warm. Now, however, we do realise that we've got quite a lot of fence because we, we put extra boarding in the back fence because the reeds were all just rotting yeah. away because it's not a permanent that, solution. Oh, that was a day and a half that. We rebuilt the back fence and painted it and a day it was chucking down the rain because we've got to do stuff when we're not at work. So we had to get it done. The two of us were just howling and cackling at trying to do this in the rain. And somebody thought it was funny when I got stuck behind the greenhouse and can get out again because I was screwing the boards in place and I twisted myself into some kind of pretzel to put the bottom set of screws in and then couldn't straighten back up again and couldn't get out. Probably just as well we weren't filming that day because I think somebody would have gone and gotten their camera and filmed it. I think it was rather well, than yeah. rescuing me. It was a long time ago, well before we did YouTube, I think. It was back in blogging days. Yes, or that would have been on the blooper reel. But anyway, so I am aware that we have now got way more fences and things that are red than I'm we very aware of it. Did yes, because you have to colour correct every time you film anything. It takes a long time. So I think maybe it might be time to start thinking about introducing some other shades into the garden. Not having everything the same. Not colour. having everything the same colour. I I think changing the fences might be a very big job because there are so much of them and also as you'll know from various tours around the garden we now do have things growing on some of the fences so I think trying to repaint those while we've it's got a big job. black currants and clematis and things growing on them that might be difficult so I think what we need to do for that is we need to get the Webster boys and Lindsay round yes and they could contribute he is. He could do the high bits on and the show. And hands. Yes. So I'm thinking maybe I might change the colour of some... Good plan, Batman. ...some elements just to break it up a little bit. Right, OK, I need to get back because I've got to get these tomatoes sorted. Oh, we should tell them what is the paint because they'll ask. Oh, it's um, autumn red. If it's... Well, some brands call it autumn red, some call it red cedar. So depends which brand. Yeah, so... Um, other hobbies other than gardening then? I do like gardening. You do, quite obviously, as we've told them all about what we do. Yes, because it's a, an outdoor mental health type exercise. Um, do I have other hobbies? I don't know if I can tell you about my other hobbies because, you know, international women of mystery and my alter ego is... Because I'm Batman. <laughs> Standing joke in our head. Um... <sighs> I'm a gamer. I, mm -hmm. I am. I am a, an Xbox and mobile, a mobile and type gamer. So I am a very sad geek. 
in that respect. Um, Whereas I just can't get into I, When I was a kid and it was the Atari and all the platform <laughs> games, I loved that. I can't get into modern games. You tried to get me into Assassin's Creed and I can appreciate it as in the graphics are amazing and I can appreciate the design and the story. And Though you hate when I climb up high yeah, buildings oh. and jump off them. <laughs> <laughs> Which no. is the best bit. Yeah. And it does lead to lots of amusing conversations when we'll be watching a movie and I go, I've jumped off that building, I've run along that rooftop. And you're like, what? And it's like, oh, Assassin's Creed. It takes me a Assassin's second. Creed. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a gamer, a reader, obviously, you know, ook. It's a... She is an ook, for it, those of you who know. It's an occupational hazard. I do love to read. Enjoy good movies. Okay, see ook. See ook. Um, yeah. Crafts, quite like my origami and sort of... Models. Model making pots of. Um, yeah. So we've stopped at light, so good point to ask them. If the garden got wiped clean and mm -hmm. we had to start again, would we do anything differently? I think I know instantly what your answer would be to that. <laughs> what would that be, dear? <laughs> that you would want to put your greenhouse where my shed is and that you want, would want a greenhouse that was the size that the shed is. Um, yeah, bigger. So you'd want a bigger greenhouse? Yes. And, and a, sunny, a sunnier position? Yes, yeah, so your shed is currently in the bit that's got the biggest sunbeam all day. It gets sun all day, so I'd like to put my greenhouse there. Um, and I'd like it to be bigger, because you always want a bigger greenhouse. What else? Anything you'd change? Um, that would probably be the main thing. I probably, in terms of the front garden, I would probably not put a rhododendron in the middle of the lawn. No, I would actually love to move. And Umi, the, the big Japanese acer, who's gorgeous and we love her, but um, I think I wouldn't have put her there if we had known what we know now, because she's going to interfere. At some point, her roots are going to damage the paving and she's going to interfere with being able to drive in and out of the driveway and stuff and the neighbours might complain. So I'd maybe I'd maybe put her in the middle of the garden. She's gorgeous. Yeah, we, the, the problem with the rhododendron in the middle of the, the lawn is that it's low and therefore it makes it harder to mow around it. And it drops leaves everywhere. Yeah. So. And yeah. Yeah, but I had the thing about always wanting the rhododendron since I was a kid, so that's why that's there. I came home from work and Kate was actually putting it in. She wanted to surprise me when I came home and I came home and caught her. So yeah, so yeah, change that. Um, anything else or is that it? That's probably the main things. Yeah, um, yeah everything else is pretty much I maybe out. wouldn't want that weird zigzaggy line on the front lawn, because that's a nightmare to do the edging. Even though I know you do the edging. <laughs> And it was me that did the lawn and the front did it, but I'd probably have a boring straight side yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. You guys have not, we need to do an, a from above shot, like we did for the back garden, so they can see the shape of the lawn, because nobody's ever actually seen it. I'd have to go into Narnia to do that. You would, you'd have to hang out the window. That's one for later. Yes. Yeah. Okay then, the next question was. Where, if we could live anywhere, where would we want to live? Now, I think we'd be a bit different about this to the point where I quite like sunshine, so I'd like, to, I wouldn't like to live somewhere like California that's just sunny all the time and never gets a change in weather. I like the seasons, so maybe New England, because then you get the best of the summer and the best of the winter. What about you? have a place I would necessarily want to live. Quite like where we live. Um but somewhere where we had a big a bigger garden. More space, more space yeah. and a, not fewer neighbours but less yeah. close yeah, neighbours. Yeah. A bit a bit more space. Neighbours are good but we sometimes it feels a bit close and you're in everyone else's business. It's a bit weird. So yeah, a more space and space between us and the neighbours would be good. Uh, actually, yeah, I'd love to have like big mature trees and like, you know, gardens that have different areas so you can't just see the whole garden in one go. And water. We don't, water. Have, oh. we don't have anywhere we could put a water feature because the garden's not big enough. But not just a water feature. I Moving water. Yeah, I'd have, love to have like a wee stream or a pond. Or... Yeah. Oh, that would be good. Oh, sigh. <laughs> 
maybe if she dirt in the lottery. Yeah, maybe. At our age, it's the only way we're ever going to be able to afford a new house. Let's see aforementioned tomato and red pepper soup and um, leftover pizza from last night. Pizza never goes to waste in this house. This is a good plan. So the very last question we got made us laugh. Um, so it's from a self-confessed doomsday prepper, which is a weird, we don't really have that kind of thing here so much, but we see it in the TV and stuff. So we kind of know what it is. But they said, basically, are we self-sufficient? If there was a doomsday, um, I won't use the term they use because YouTube will strike me, but um, an event um, tomorrow, would we be able to survive with the food we grow in the garden? No. No. We have just a little kind of backyard, back garden, urban kind of thing. It's nowhere near big enough to grow that volume of food. So we grow quite a lot of the food we like and we eat, like our tomatoes, our peppers, all of that kind of stuff. But we wouldn't be able to survive on it. Um, plus, that kind of event. I think it's kind of hard to garden when you're carrying a shotgun and, and an axe <laughs> and you're know, trying to fend off the zombies. A baseball bat with nails in it. Yeah. So we've seen these types of TV shows. Uh, doomsday events would be zombies, vampires. Uh -huh. uh, uh, the electricity getting stolen. We've seen all of these. So no, but we're happy with what we do though. We, we grow quite a lot actually, but you'd be surprised what we grow in the space we've got. Um, We've already mentioned the lawn. We could give up our lawns and grow an awful lot more, but we get a lot of joy in our garden. It's not meant to just be a productive space. It's a happy space. Yeah, it's it's a garden that we also grow vegetables in. That's not its it's main purpose. purpose. No, because no. we like to go and sit out there with a book, maybe with a small gin and tonic or other libation. Um, as long as there's no zombies about here. As long as it, don't drink in zombie people. But yeah, it's 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 a living space. It's an extension of the house. It's an, another space that we live in. So um, yeah, it's not meant to be self-sufficient type space. Yeah, and we don't grow gin. So yeah, we'd be good. juniper. Those fruit trees you mentioned. <gasps> That's very true. <laughs> yeah, this lot don't know about our brewing history. So no, that's that's for another day. That's exactly. So, to... yeah, so guys, I hope that was fun. Just some daft stuff. Not a lot of gardening, but a lot of Eli and Kate. And if you want some more daft Eli and Kate and you want to know about Kate's weed burner, <laughs> watch this video next and we'll see you next time, guys. See ya. Bye. <laughs>